Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Aegis stream. As usual, all of our technology is fighting us in in perpetuity and uh, in conjunction. So we're going to um, basically do exactly what we were going to do, minus being inside a tabletop simulator. Also, I am here solo because every method of voice chat that we usually use has decided not to work tonight. Um, I am the designer of the game, Breeze Wraith, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the updated robots that we have brought to you in the new Tabletop Sim demo and likely what is going to see print. Let's see. Let me notify. Uh, Alright, so the. The main idea is, over the last few months, we have been adjusting the cards uh, for the 100 plus robots in the game in accordance with playtesting here on stream, playtesting off of stream, and of course hearing your feedback about uh, gameplay and stuff. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go, I'm going to run through all of the just cards tonight. I'm just going to go left to right. For all of them, talk about what's changed, what hasn't changed. Some robots have stat adjustments. Some of some of them were completely redone. Other ones have new art. Um, and so yeah, we can probably get right into it. In the background now, I have uh, the soundtrack to one of my favorite all time games, Wild Arms 2. We're gonna, we're gonna listen to that while I go through this, and also if anyone can tell me if my audio levels are good, always helpful, because even though we use the same audio levels every week, sometimes it is bad. We'll get better at this eventually. Music is loud. Alright, good. These are the valuable pieces of feedback. Lowering you down. Alright, there we go. Alright, so using the mad, the majestic, complex um, tools of Windows Photo Viewer, I'm going to show you um, all the new cards in the game. Alright, so basically I'm going to go through them. They're going to go through uh, their their card order, which is, you know, 1 through 100. Um, and that order is defined by the pre-built teams there and in the box. The pre-built teams are also not final. I'm going to make some uh, probably final adjustments to them as I'm laying out the punch board for the robot pieces. Uh, but yeah, this, so this is where they're currently at in the uh, the current demo. So first guy right here, we got ARC-150. ARC-150 has not changed, he's still Einer's robot. He still has the art that we did for the stretch goal for the Kickstarter. Um, Einer is now behind him with a gray overlay so he blends into the background more. That's something I experimented with with all the commanders, trying to make them blend into the background so the robot's still at the forefront. Um, whereas I believe right now in the demo, they're either, they are, they either stick out well or the commanders aren't there at all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So the commanders have rejoined their robots in the picture frame. Uh, Einer's robot still beats your face in. Uh, with this powerful mail attack. Alright. Next up. Axis 100. I adjusted the red on his art so he's brighter and he won't show up as almost black when you print him out. Other than that, he is the same. Um, some of you might be familiar with him having a two-shot cannon on his second attack. That was always a typo, so now he's back on, back to being 3 and 3. Ab 200. Uh, we got powerful melee attack dude here. Also, nothing has really changed. Uh, his second ability's name might have changed, and it's actually still up for grabs if anybody wants to name that. Uh, we're still getting submissions for attack names from some of our VIP backers, so that name might change. Uh, strong throw. Ender 100. Good old Ender 100. Hasn't really changed in like four years. Still shoots you four times, still flies around, still has melee evade. He's all good, fam. Next, we got Go 400. 
do a double check if my audio is still good. Robot updates! A little fuzzy on your audio, the music's fine. Maybe if I lean in a little bit, that'll help. Actually, I don't even know, maybe it is this thing? The microphone? Let me know if the audio gets better over time. This will actually be pretty good for uh, newcomer Mr. Nep, who doesn't know a whole lot about this game, so uh, seeing all the cards would probably be pretty helpful, as would this video be for any new robot comer. Um, so Go400 also hasn't changed... maybe? No, this guy hasn't changed at all. Okay, so yeah, he still does two... He still has mirrored attacks, he still pushes you at a range, and hits you at close range for damage. Um, good old robot. For various utility things, while also being able to bean someone pretty hard if you get close to him. Izzy 100 still one of our most technical level 1 robots. He has jamming and, reta he has jamming and retaliate, and uh, can disarm you, which means you can't attack anymore. For the following turn if he hits you um so that's cool so he can do that on your turn you can do that on your opponent's turn he has aimed to keep you from uh making his attack too powerful because disarm is a very powerful ability um it kind of stops your opponent from being able to play the game so we have very very carefully put it on particular attacks and robots because it is still very cool and strategically viable but we just made wanted to make sure that it wasn't uh broken to do no 400 also hasn't changed robot quote unquote uh jesse our balance manager this robot is perfect and we should never touch it so we didn't um ender 1000 also hasn't changed also hasn't really changed since ever uh we updated his art at one point which you can see here now but um similar to axis 100 he still shoots you twice if he stands still with that overload ability Still blitzes, still is an absolute nightmare for any robots that fly, aka most combined robots. This robot is still good at um, taking down guys that are bigger than him, and also guys that are smaller than him. Let's see, ARC 2500 also hasn't changed. Basically, Ironer's team was pretty well and good from the get-go. Uh, we didn't really need to do much to it. So yeah, his level 2 is still... Wrong. It's guy hits a bunch of guys at close range. Hits some guy for a lot of damage at long range. We good. Um, Ender 5000. Uh, what has changed here? We might have actually done something to him. Um, I know at one point we made his first attack have aimed and piercing, and his second attack have anti air. Well, we took anti-air off of his first deck and just made it exclusive to a second attack to differentiate them more. Um, so you have a really long range attack that can pierce guys, and a short range attack that's good against other flyers. And Ender Buster Kick, which is of course a very powerful melee attack that can do up to 4 damage to some jerk, uh, if you get close to him. Alright, so here's change. Um... Moving on to Etwal's team, Etwal is our is of course our E commander. He is fast and furious, and he's a good skirmish robot. Um, different from the version that is currently in the demos is that we have taken off his main attack and just stuck him with his uh, magnificent bullet rondo. We felt that for what the robot was doing, um, you've, we've actually talked about this Etwal change, I think like last week on the stream or the week before, but yeah. We to just look a hard look at what he was doing, you know, it's just, just like, for a robot that is basically meant to fly and shoot and skirmish one-on-one, -on -one, he had so much going on with his card that it was just more confusing than what it was worth. Uh, so we just lowered him down to one attack that reliably does a good amount of damage and also does extra damage to other flyers. He's got, he's got Jet 3, which means he can still move a ton. He can move 9 spaces for 3 energy. Evade one that makes him harder to kill, and of course the backbone of his whole robot, Magnificence, which makes him uh, one faster, one tougher, and gives him one more energy. Uh, that ability has never changed. But now, his card is just streamlined. 
Arlie 100 hasn't really changed. As far as I know, overclock signal bursting has always been 5 energy, unless it's gone up. It might have gone up. I think he might be 4 in the demo right now. We put it up to 5. Because uh, when the 100% accurate uh, buffs are very powerful. So we just wanted to balance out the costs on those while not making them not 100% again. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for him. Uh, E-Jet 100 also hasn't changed. Shoots guys, but can shoot multiple guys if they're next to each other. He's just a weaker... He's like a goon version of Atwal. Still has that jet ability. Still shoots guys uh, when he dies. So, uh, Atwal is me. The whole idea behind Atwal's pre-built team is that um, dying... Or your robots getting destroyed matters. Atwal himself gets more powerful when his allies die. And then several robots on this team have ability called Parting Shot, which will do damage when they get destroyed. And so that's kind of like the uh, overarching uh, idea for his team on the end his playstyle. So we have Esha, which also rewards you when he blows up, but the difference is this robot just blows himself up. Um, you can get that extra point of damage on another robot, or kill another dude for sure after he dies. Two. He hasn't really changed. L100 also hasn't really changed. I think his parting shot number might have changed. One of these, some of these parting shot numbers might have changed because they were wrong. We always want the parting shot number to match the range on the robot's attacks. So since this robot's ranges are both three, we want his parting shot to be three, and it just makes more sense that way. Uh, Gun 100, good old Gun 100, still is, is, has, has not changed. Um, still draws your opponent's fire. Uh, it looks like. There's a weird font thing going on in the bottom there, where the bottom line is, like, slightly smaller than the rest of it. So maybe I'll fix that. Um, NA-400, this one, this is a robot that's probably being moved over to another starting team. But yeah, this robot uh, is a pretty trademark eye type. He can do terrible things to enemies behind walls by lobbing grenades. And he can also stun them close up, and he also evades. Uh, so he's like one of those, he's like a pretty backbone I-type thing. I-type robot, if you're running a whole I-type team, he'll get damage and he'll stop your opponents from doing things. Poster child for I-class robots. Gun 2000. Also hasn't changed, still buffs everybody when he comes in, and smash everybody around him. All in all, good robot. Main weakness is that if you only have him, you lose because he only makes 4 energy. Um, other than that, he can really disrupt a lot of things just by being on the field. XL1000, here's Etwal's specific level 2. Um, he's sporting fancy new art that I did just recently. Um, art that was long, long overdue for being redone. So now he looks like a tiny XL gun, uh, which I'll get to in a second. Um, this robot hasn't, mechanically this robot hasn't changed, uh, we did, actually he has, as per some changes last week, his second attack is now a, an exact duplicate of, uh, his level 1's, uh, Magnificent Bullet Rondo, so basically the flavor here is that, uh, when his robot evolves up to this version, he gets a sweet melee attack which is like an X-cost melee attack, he can murder guys in like one shot. Um, but he also gets to keep his bottom attack just in case you are running low on energy, or it's more pertinent to use that against uh, a robot, like say if your opponent was flying. And it's slightly more accurate. And we got the big boy, Excel Gun here. Uh, overall just most powerful level 3 robot in the game. He's fast, he's tough. Gives you a lot of energy. Um, he just deals raw damage. Uh, from his last version, he his melee attack got more accurate and it gained critical. The Imperial Sky Saber finale. Really good. Uh, but overall, this has not changed, though he has gained a variant of it. We have a new variant Excel Gun, which I will get near the end of this. Get to near the end of this. 
All right, Gamoon's team. What's new with Gamoon? Uh, nothing. He's still a perfect robot. Nothing's wrong with him. He's just really strong. He pushes dudes, shoots flying robots from far away, gives your slow guys reroll. Strong, strong commander. Uh, Ab 100, perfect. Never has never needed to be changed. He beats your he ba he beats you up. All this robots ever done. Uh, go 100. Also hasn't changed. Pushes guys, beats you up with a mortar. Get 100 hasn't changed. Pulls guys in, shoots you with a blunderbuss. Ick has got some sweet new art compared to the current demo. So we got that in uh, just recently. But other than that, he has not mechanically changed. He can still move a robot three spaces, any robot within six of him. Really good for utility. Would you would you call GMD a cinnamon roll? You're gonna have to explain that one to me. GMD a cinnamon roll. Uh, let's see. Uh, SSM 400 hasn't changed. She still shoots three rockets twice. Zor 100. Uh, much to Reggie's chagrin, we have not put the radius back onto Zor 100. Um, but yeah, he's got. If he didn't have parting shot eight before, now he has parting shot eight. Matches both of his things. Tried out. We tried out putting. We tried putting arcing on his second attack, but I guess it's too good. Uh, so we took it off again. Let's see. Ah, uh, here's get one thousand, looking in fine form. Uh, let's see. So get one thousand uh, is Gamoon's new level two on his team. Um, he has new art compared to his old art that looked a little bit like Spider Man. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is the New World Order for Gamoon. He no longer has Ab 1000 as a default, though Ab 1000 is still in the game and you can use him all day. So yeah, this new AG robot, uh, you can pour X energy into him and pull robots in that many spaces, which is really strong. Uh, and then get her gun burst, which will deal three damage to some loser and everybody next to him. And that has a combined tag, so if your opponent is set up, very poorly or if you set up your opponent before combining into this robot you can deal out a ton of damage uh, just by virtue of making him in the right area <laughs> SSM 13000 oh, yeah, going back to the last one this is something that a lot of people won't notice but uh, the background for the great the great states background with the building from the bridge on it uh, has also been updated in that I redrew parts of it like a year or two ago, but it never found its way to the asset folder uh, for the cards, so I uh, fixed that up. So now the robot, so now the buildings in the background have a little bit more detail on them uh, than they used to. And let's see, SSM 3000. Uh, robot's perfect, hasn't mechanically changed, however it art its art has been upgraded. It might look the same at a glance, but man, this art was super rough when I opened it. Uh, it was... everything was very, very bad. I remember when I drew it the first time, it was kind of a hack job. Because um, I didn't quite know what the design of the robot was supposed to be. But So I went back in and I uh, adjusted a lot of details, sharpened up the line art and everything. And I gave him a new little face. He has a little underbite now. So now he is actually Rocket Dog. SSM, get some! Uh, robot hasn't changed, still stilly. Still pulls you in, punches you away. Funny robot. Eyes of 100! Um, hasn't changed? She has Ambuscade as her ability, which I believe she has in her current demo. That's like the only real thing that, uh, has changed with her in the last few months was that your robots gain rule one until end of turn if you target an enemy that has not taken any form of damage yet that's sweet he's the solid snake commander the perfect cinnamon roll 
<laughs> Perfect summon roll must protect. Like, yeah, I, I, I try to have Ryan keep me up to date with the spicy memes. Sadly, he's not here today. Well, actually, he's totally here, but we couldn't get voice to work. Um, Actol! Uh, let's see. Actol 100 hasn't changed. Still cloaks. Still pierces guys. Still's, still, has, still has a gun uh, that looks like a uh, number one foamy finger. As everybody has pointed out to me. And it is not changing. Next! Esper 100. Uh, hasn't changed. Still a pretty go-to robot. Actually... No, it's totally... Has it changed? I can't remember when I updated this art, but I did update this art. Uh, so the art got better. But I think that might have been a long time ago, and the art might still be in the current demo. Esper 600. This is very important. Very, very important. Uh, his uh, integrity has gone from 1 to 2. So now instead of being the most gimmick robot in the set that is unusable, he is now the most gimmick robot in the box that uh, sees some vague use, in that he can now live through a pop at Bomb Blast, or just generally getting shot by something stupid. Um, so yeah, now he has he still has Evade 5 and Beacon, but now he has 2 Integrity. Uh, so you actually have to put in a little bit more work to blow him up. Let's see... Uh, Gekko 100 hasn't changed. We dabbled with the idea of taking his second action off because we were wondering what it was actually adding, but it adds enough strategic value that we didn't take it off. Do do do. Ion 1000. Ion 100. Uh, I think we added Energy Siphon? Yeah. Because Energy Siphon was on like two robots, and I'm just like, ah, oh, let's just put it on. We need to put it on more robots to justify the mechanic's existence. So now all the Ions have it except for Rios. Uh. Ida 400. Hasn't changed. Still flies, still annoying. Gekul 2000. Here's a robot that's changed. Uh, it no longer does energy damage, and we've gone back and forth on this one a little bit because... This robot is like, kinda... This robot really got jerked around a lot in development, because originally we're going to make him do just... We're, we're just gonna straight up change him from energy damage to physical damage. So instead of doing energy burn and burning away your opponent's resources, he'll just do normal damage. And then we would have a variant version of him over in the new uh, 10 robots at the end of this file that would do energy damage, and that would just be Rio specific. So we would just save ourselves a bunch of work and have the same robot twice, but one would do energy damage and one wouldn't. Um, well, we figured out that this Gekul robot didn't work as the uh, variant for various reasons that had to do with combining uh, and that we wanted it, it we realized that the variant really wanted to be a gel instead because there are some higher level robots that wanted that name um, on the robot so then that robot became the energy that robot became an energy burning level two but this robot was still now a a damaging robot and we never changed it back um because it also lost its ion. Originally this robot's name was Gekleon, but now it's just Gekul 2000. Uh, and it didn't really make sense for Gekul just to arbitrarily gain energy burn without having the ion name. Uh, long story short, we were keeping it this way, and eventually we will introduce more level 2 energy burners. Not that we really lost any. We still, there's still the same amount of level 2 energy burners in the box, but this one is no longer one of them. Um, so yeah, the, he lost the damage on his first attack, he gained stun on his first attack, instead of heavy I believe. So now this robot is actually particularly annoying, and he also has stun on his second attack, which has a uh, shorter range and combine on it, and more accurate. He also saw a last minute increase in his cloaking abilities, so he has cloaking 6 instead of uh, cloaking 5, um, and that's like a development issue that was a, that was a development choice because originally he had this robot only gave you like three energy and he had cloaking five the year the idea is for cloaking robots cloaking costs to always be more than the energy they give so when you make a team of five cloaking robots you can't just cloak troll forever um 
But eventually, eventually we put this robot's energy up to 5, and then he had Cloaking 5, and then if this robot was the last robot on the board, um, there's like a rule against Cloaking if you only have one robot left on the board, but instead of leaving it up to knowing some caveat in the rules, I just made it Cloaking 6. So if he is the last robot in your control, he can no longer Cloak. Because that is a bad gameplay state. And I have spent way too long on this robot. But yeah, he saw a bunch of changes. Next! Doot. Yeah, Esper 600 surviving parting shots does sound nice. That was the other thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Esper 600 dying from parting shot and dying to literally everything kind of defeated the purpose of the robot. Uh, trolling your opponent's tactics. Um, Esper is uh, still, still a cool robot. Uh, hasn't really changed much. I think we pro I think we changed her accuracy, so she can no longer evasion drop somebody like a million. Uh, Esper four uh, Esper four thousand hasn't really changed uh, in the current iteration. And if anyone wants me to stop on any of these robots that I'm scrolling by, uh, just let me know and I'll talk a little bit more about it. So Saul one hundred. Uh, Stell's gone through some changes. Um, we basically just dropped the cost on her first attack from 5 down to 3, because, you know, just give her 3 damage, 3 energy, 1 damage, 100% accuracy dude that she can do. Um, because her commander ability, Arrest Mandate, wants you to be able to shoot something with her and then follow up with something else. Well, it turns out that's really hard to do when you're spending 5 energy on Stell's first attack, and it's taking up like a third of your turn's energy just to deal 1 damage, so you can trigger her commander ability, which makes you spend more energy to do another attack, and you also have to spend energy to get that reroll that she gives you. So, TLDR, we just uh, lowered her EP laser type justice's uh, energy cost. And so... Uh, we also did a hard look at both of our S-type commanders, and we just realized that they were kind of both, they were both kind of like the worst in the game overall. We just gave them both a boost because neither of them were particularly performing that great. So new Stell, uh, new less energy intensive Stell is a bit better because now she actually gives you a net energy gain instead of uh, being energy neutral. Because she gives you 5 and only costs 3 to do a thing with sometimes. Uh, Arrows 100 has not changed. Ender 600 has n has changed. We gave him an extra space of movement. Before he only moved like 3 or 4 or something. So we just bumped him up to 5. Because we were looking at this robot and originally the concern was that you could move this guy out of nowhere and then blow somebody away with his overly powerful attack. Uh, but then we realized that in all the years of testing this robot, that literally can't happen because you're spending 8, 9, 10 energy to do the dumb attack. And uh, he was actually just completely useless with 3 or 4 movement. So we just uh, we threw him a bone and gave him as much movement as your average E-type has. So you have to spend a whopping 13 energy to move and shoot with him. Shazow. Uh, let's see, Gun 300 has not changed. Uh, you got, I know that a lot of these robots have gotten updated flavor text, actually, with uh, some of the new commanders quoted on them. So I may have missed one or two of those. But, um, so this robot is, has combat drop. Uh, it ha mechanically, it hasn't changed, but flavorfully. Um, so it's a robot with combat drop, but it isn't sector authority faction locked. And we did that for particular gameplay reasons, namely that we wanted you to be able to use this with Excel Gun. Uh, because if he had the yellow faction tag, you wouldn't be able to merge it with Excel Gun. Um, which is kind of like one of the headliner robots in the set, and that we thought that was dumb. So, a little bit of flavor fail to not have a, sec a sector tag on him, even though he has the sector authority mechanic. So we figured out how to tie that up neatly with a bow. Uh... Sheridan, who is the leader of the Lower Sector Authority, sends this robot to pop it as a present. And you can actually find this robot on 
You originally found this robot on Poppet's default team, but um, he... It's basically uh, Sheridan sent it as a present to Poppet, so it's no longer Sector Authority aligned. Uh, and that's why it doesn't have the Sector faction locking, because it was exported from the faction and kind of sent as a birthday present to another character who was far away. And let's see. Flavor is very important to my heart. Um, Ida 100. Uh, let's see, what's going on with Ida 100? Nothing changed here. He still has 5 range, which I believe was always the case. Uh, two. Oh. Then 100 has not changed. He shoots for damage from far away. He's strong. Sour 300. Uh, finally got updated art. He no longer has blue stripes. He has yellow stripes. And with a lot of the fec a lot of the with a lot of the new faction locked robots, I updated their art to reflect that they were faction locked. So I stuck the Sector Authority logo on his uh, shoulder there, and so there's the thought behind that. But other than that, uh, mechanically he hasn't changed from the current version. Arrows three thousand uh, has not changed. Yes. I know that we made an edit to the cost and accuracy of his second ability, but I believe that was... I believe that is in the current demo. Ida 1000. Um, has not changed. Maybe we adjusted the accuracy on his second attack. It might have been broken before with super low accuracy. Uh, so we just adjusted that. Next. <laughs> like what do you... I just assume I just assume that Gun 300 is like that really annoying kid in class. Maybe it makes really maybe it makes really annoying noises. It's like a Dalek. Maybe Gun 300 yeah maybe Gun 300 is just straight up like a Dalek or something. Uh. Arrows 6000. Uh has not changed. He still does all the same stuff that he always does. Um, he lost heavy at one point, but that's about it. But I think he lost heavy a long, long time ago. Ion 121 hasn't changed. Still hunts down robots that are gone astray away from your opponent's team. Arc 100 hasn't changed. Poster child for A-type robots. Extremely efficient. Uh, face smashing. Gel 100. Hamster bot. Hamster bot. Uh, has not changed. Ion 400. Also has not changed. Ipple. Also has not changed. Uh, Ica 400. We might have done something to. Um,. If he had evasion, we took off evasion. We made some edit. We made some adjustment to this robot so that it was just um, more usable overall, or that, or so it didn't straight up outclass the other Ica. Yeah, I actually completely forget. It was something really minor. We might have adjusted his costs or something like that. The next. Sal 4000, Sal 400, uh, the last part of Rios' team, um, he gained a reroll on his attack, uh, that's about it, I believe, Dum. arc 3000, Rios' first combined robot, he is still good, yes. Yeah, we haven't made any adjustments to this robot. Might have made some adjustments to the reminder text for Flickr to make it clear on what it does. Gel 2000. Um, also hasn't changed. Shoots Ross. Still shoots missiles. 
We had, we added new flavor text to him because uh, Guapo and Gordo needed some character representation on cards to kind of get their personalities across. So I tried to get at least one quote from every from every mainline commander. Uh, not counting the machineless commanders because we really just didn't have enough space to be honest uh, to get quotes uh, from 18 different commanders and still have other flavor text really. Um, so yeah, this actually is the, the the flavor text on this robot actually tells you uh, how to use the robot, which I thought was uh, pretty ham-fisted. But yeah, it's Gordo explaining to his uh, dumber brother Guapo how to do the thing, and that you're supposed to uh, combine, and then you're supposed to use his evasion down, and then you're supposed to hit him with something else. This is a very particular robot that's kind of hard to wield, and I use the flavor text to kind of spell out what you're supposed to do with it. Um, Ion 5000 has not changed. This is still vanilla Ion 5000. He might have... pretty sure he has 8 integrity in the current demo. Uh, if he doesn't, uh, well, no, he does. Big and tough. Now moving on to Diane's team. Um, Diane... Is still the same as she is in the demo. Still a reliable damage user at a good range. Uh, damage dealer at a good range that has retaliate. And an ability that gives you other robots retaliate. Just a all around strong uh, level 1 robot. Arrows 400 does the thing. Uh, that it's always done. Just accurate all the way around. It's accurate, makes your other robots more accurate. Full robot. Um, L400. Still does exactly what he's always done. He bombs you. Uh, Gekul 200 always does exactly what he does. He shoots you and sometimes crits. Goff 100 still makes shields. Still has reminder text for defense buffs, which I thought would be useful. And then an aid 100, which is probably what we're going to put on uh, at Wall's team, has um uh, just a basic stun grenade. It's really easy to understand. Uh, I type. And then snow 100, which we'll probably throw on Iner's team, uh, is one of the more basic level one S type robots. It can shoot somebody for a damage or heal for one. It's it's cool. Hello, Port Punky. Welcome. Let's see, um, yeah, still going over all the cool robots that we're shipping the game with, and believe me, that game is almost done. That's very exciting. <laughs> and getting these cards together was a very big hassle. It is working, our cards are very complex, and working with them in InDesign is, is, uh, is very taxing on the computer and my psyche. Let's see, Inade, 3000. Um, still does the thing that's always done. Uh, it does uh, jamming, has jamming too. And it has two combine abilities, which is the only, this is the only uh, level two that has two combine abilities that uh, where it can launch its damage down to grade and its healing grenade at the same time, as soon as you combine into it. And I suppose that's to make up for the fact he doesn't uh, have any offensive actions. So just the act of making this robot can kind of swing the game back towards your favor. It's kind of a poster child for um, assisting robots. And then Diane's second level 2 robot is the GS type Snow 2000 and he has not changed. He still defense buffs and he still does damage. And then uh, Snow 6000. Also has not changed. He still has a suite of different lasers. Um, one boosts some guy's accuracy and defense, which will make a very formidable ally. Another one drops somebody's accuracy, and in the middle attack deals damage. And yeah, pretty sure this robot's always done all of these things. Yeah. The Hello Poppet, everybody's favorite robot. 
Um, still one of the most powerful commanders, unexpectedly. Uh, Lone Crusade. We got a bunch of feedback on Lone Crusade. Uh, we decided not to change it. Um, it's not that. It's not that good. It's definitely a really powerful ability that just drops the damage off of you. But if you're sending Poppet in alone, it's very, still very easy for her to get surrounded and just get destroyed. So you still have to be tactical um, when you use her. And she's still mostly just very good in multiplayer. Um, not incredibly... Not, this is not really that effective in uh, multiplayer. She's still very high tier. Uh, if we, I wish Jesse were here, he could give you more information on the balance behind Poppet. But, uh... I did increase her bomber whirlwind uh, action by one, so now you need to pay more energy if you want to uh, shoot her dual nova and use her whirlwind in the same turn. So now she's just very, just a little bit more energy intensive um, to make up for the fact that she is um, a very powerful damage dealer. Uh, one of my favorite art redos is uh, Arlie 300 here where I gave him a bunch of yellow highlights, slapped that Sector Authority S on him, Circle S yellow thing on him. He has a cooler face now. Uh, looks more streamlined and alien than the original Arlie. But yeah, he's got Combat Drop. He does Overclock. He still boosts people's accuracy. I believe we increased the cost on that like with the other Arlie. The other Arlie. And I upped his... I also nerfed his uh, accuracy. So you need to roll threes instead of twos on this dude. Because this robot was overall just very, very good. He was able to kind of invalidate all robots that had uh, any type of evasion. Just because he would pretty much always deal two damage to you, no matter what. Um, so with three ups now, he'll deal damage a little bit less often. Uh, because yeah, two, two, uh, two, two up with aimed is very good, and it uh, kind of gets around all the robots that we gave evasion and defense buffs to. Esper 200, um, it's your boy, he's got new art too, I adjusted his face a little bit. Uh, he's got new flavor text from Vadis, but otherwise hasn't mechanically changed. Um, he's still just kind of an overall... He's just an overall variant on the original Esper, um, where the original Esper can sometimes, very rarely, roll double sixes and deal four damage. This robot can deal four damage uh, to a single target in other way, in a more uh, conventional way of just hitting them four times without critical. Uh, let's see. Look at that. He's a combat ghost. Shell 400 hasn't changed, still shoots two missiles. SSM 100 hasn't changed, he still has uh, the oldest art in the game by a long shot, in that he was drawn about four years before the game even started. Um, and I decided not to update him, just because I liked that uh, kind of inside joke. Just once junk from the past, now serving a greater purpose. Still has my favorite flavor text. Well, that's still kind of a, a very build around me robot that gets better if you like pile buffs onto him. Valve 100 uh, has not changed. He had reroll briefly, but I took it off because it was kind of dumb to invalidate our new commander Sheridan by giving every allied heart eating robot reroll. Um. But yeah. Get 400. Uh, this robot has not changed. He still pulls guys in, and he can smack them afterwards with Tusk Crasher, and we gave him reminder text to point that out. Detonator! Uh, L2000, Poppet's main level 2 robot. Uh, it's got L Fire Burst missiles. Detonator, Retaliate, still very powerful, uh, level 2 EG type, makes a big boom. Self 1000, another big booming uh, level 2, 
He has flight and double move, so he's super evasive. And he has a heal and a damage thing. That both hit very that both hit very reliably. However, he is made of toilet paper with only four integrity for level two. So you still want to be very careful about what you're doing with him. And that you might want to fly him in, heal some guys, and fly out with that double move. Um at one point we dropped his attack cost from 3 to 2. I can't remember if that was the new update or before. He's a pretty cool robot now. And then Solve 5000 hasn't changed. He's still a big rough Cheeto Puff. Uh, deals damage a lot. Uh, moves a lot. Moves fast. It's hard. Heals on his off time. Pretty good stuff. And of course, we'll never ship the game without Ab 1000. He's just such a great robot. Looks like a mini fridge with legs. Uh, I think I chose not to update this robot's art just because it's... It's just too near and dear to me. Uh, he hasn't changed mechanically. Unless the, this change to detonator is new. He might, the change to detonator might be new. Before it used to be detonator number. Like, Detonator 2 would deal 2 damage to everybody in 2 radius. Now we just made Detonator... The, the, the text for Detonator is just you deal 2 damage in a 2 radius. Because we realize we're never going to put Detonator 1 on anything. Or Detonator 4 on anything. So it's like really just like Detonator 2 and 3. And 3 is probably too good on average anyway. So we just totally just chopped that number out. And now Detonator is always 2 damage to everybody within 2. When you combine. Streamlined. And here's your main uh, neutral lined energy burning uh, level two. It should be noted that starting at AB, starting at AB 1000, this is now in the fourth deck. The yeah, the fourth deck. This is the Stellar Ascent pack that has all combines in it to help take your game to the next level after you're com after you've become comfortable using the, uh, the starter packs. So yeah, very passionate about this robot right here. He's cool. Uh, he's another... I was waiting a long time to get a second IS type into the game because I think IS has a lot of uh, potential to be a very cool class of robot. So this guy, yeah, does energy burn uh, with a laser, which is neat. And then he can also repair people around him because we wanted to give him something nice. And then he has jamming one and reroll one, and that kind of serves as a median to his second, uh, his level three, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, then we have Ender 2000. This robot hasn't mechanically changed. He's still, um, a very powerful robot that lets you stun somebody at melee range, and then they'll never be able to hit you, uh, because he has melee evade two. Very trolly, uh, level two robot. Very EI type. Then we got moving up to level threes. We got L4000, big man missile fists. Did some art adjustments on him, uh, so he's cool. He's got his final art going on. Uh, I really didn't really make any adjustments to him. I was really really wary about the sheer amount of damage that this guy doles out, but he's actually not that good. He's not, because his he's definitely, uh, he's kept in check by the fact he doesn't make a lot of energy. So if he's left alone on the board, you can very easily kite him and then just blow him up. Um, and then he also doesn't have a lot of integrity either. But he, uh, you can just bring him out and just smack some guys around real good. Uh, if he has the proper support. Z4000 hasn't changed, still... Awesome technical duelist type robot. Yeah, he has he keeps the retaliate and jamming from his level one, and now he can do he he has a whole suite of things he can do uh, as a level three. He can hit you, he can hit you, and he can hit you. But some of his uh, little attacks uh, can disarm you. They can stun you, and he can use either of his secondary actions down there in conjunction with his first action, light strike lasher. This is Light Strike Clasher has light, uh, which means you can use it and then use another attack afterwards or beforehand or whatever. Then 5000, 
underrated robot, more people should use you. Um, so yeah, going off of the little laser scorpion back here, uh, he goes straight up into Sen 5000, uh, which still keeps an energy burn, which still keeps his energy burning laser, and uh, he gets some debuffs and some, but he gets an evasion buff and an evasion debuff. Um, and he goes from jamming one and reroll one to jamming two and reroll two. Neat. See what we did there. Uh, going up to everybody, going up to everybody's favorite level four, we have Algelion, which uh, hasn't really seen any changes here, as far as I remember. Um, still lays down the smack, still a very berserker style robot that can deal lots of damage for very low energy, uh, very low energy commitment. Andrida has some fancy new art. Uh, I wasn't happy with the visual effects on him. He had like this trail of aether coming off of him before, but it didn't really look very good. So I gave the file, I gave the robot art over to one of our other artists, Emily, and she made some adjustments there. Other than that, the robot does the same weird stuff he's always done. He has to fly in a straight line to uh, do a bunch of stuff for free, so you have to like, it's like playing a weird game of, it's like playing a weird game of chess where you only have the ability to use bishops, uh, and I thought that's still kind of a neat kind of design for people to use. Then we got your boy Arc Infinity, uh, as you might know from our t-shirts. Uh, he's seen a little bit of change, he's seen a few changes. In that I made his melee attack no longer do 9 damage, instead it will do like 3 damage. Except it has uh, light and critical on it, so you can hit somebody with it, probably nail them for a ton of damage uh, if you get a bunch of crits. If you don't, you follow up with Infinity Nova. Um, so... Uh, let's see, and of course, Infinity Melee, I think we might have changed a little bit. No, we had a discussion where the, he's at, he's at his good, he's at a good number right now. Um, his energy might have changed. So Infinity Melee gives him more energy every time he takes damage from somebody. Now this guy's cool. Um, so that's his whole gimmick. He, every time you deal any amount of damage to him, he'll gain three energy production. So he'll go from five to eight to eleven to fourteen. And if he's still alive at that point, you're probably not living for much longer. Uh, so yeah, he just walks up and smites things. He can pour tons of energy into his Infinity Nova attack to burn and ate your opponent. Uh, and you can also kind of control the amount of damage your opponents are doing to you by using Rising Nova, which uh, decreases opponent's accuracy around him. So there's all sorts of things. And of course, if you... Depending on... You have to... His ability will force everybody kind of into the middle of the board, because if you combine into him, uh, his Infinity Arena combine ability will deal 2 damage to everybody that is 4 or fewer hexes away from the edge of the board, um, which is kind of cool. Give them the big macaroni. Then... They might adjust one more number on here. Level fives are always a work in progress. Arizel Sol, uh, the other level five in the box, um, sporting some new art from Stephen Gibson. He has probably seen some changes compared to what is in the demo right now. Uh, I've messed with this guy's numbers a lot. Yeah, I've messed with this guy's numbers a lot. Um, the main idea is still you charge up your laser over time and then drop some energy down and incinerate your opponents with the infinite justice cannon, uh, which is an arcing laser, I meaning you can target anybody on the board and just go boom. And everybody three around that target will also probably go boom. Has an eminence ability where your energy pool doesn't empty before each uh, recharge phase. That's also strong, especially in Combine Rondo. 
And then... It still has reroll X, where X is the number of active enemy robots. Which is kind of neat. Uh, but when it's not raining Hellfire from the sky, it's not really doing much. So you're actually just using Hellfire or Rester to move your opponents away from you and disarm them while you charge up your laser over time, or you're using Chaos Control to stun them and, uh, and, uh, yeah, you're using Chaos, you're using Chaos Control to stun them in place, probably from a decent distance away, uh, so they can't shoot you. And she has, uh, the sub of this robot has Overload, which means you can do a bunch of things twice, so you can Chaos control them, and then L fire arrest them. Uh, to uh, keep them very far away from you. And then next turn, you probably buy yourself a turn to charge up some energy over time. That is the idea with this robot. As you're playing, key, you're basically you're playing keep away with your opponent before you can just kind of rain hellfire from the sky on them. Do do do. Ab, 5 0 Alright, so now getting into the final deck in the box, the Kickstart Dawn deck. This contains all of the sweet new backer created content, as well as some extra combines and other things. So we got five new commanders going on here, all with their final art, finally. Uh, yeah, these are all definitely new, because. at least art wise, and some mechanic wise too. But art-wise, uh, we got this art, all of this art in just recently, within the last few weeks. So here's Jurlon. Still lets your robots combine from a distance, and he still gets some buffs when you do so. And other than that, he's just a straight-up powerful level 1 robot that walks up and hits you uh, for some damage. Exith 100 hasn't changed very much. She's, still got, she's just got some new art on her. And then we got Gur022, the Tiger Brothers. So, what's going on here? We might have changed his balance on the second attack a little bit. Well, other than that, this robot also hasn't changed. He still lets you redirect uh, damage from your allies. Uh, what I just say? No, if this robot would take damage, yeah, you can redirect it to your allies. So he's kind of like an immortal, an immortal tiger robot. And then um, that includes the damage he inflicts to himself with his second attack, the Tiger Brothers Great Combo Attack, where you can deal damage to himself and then direct that damage to somebody else. But it'll also still deal three to somebody's face. And then speaking of cool abilities, Dread Salvage is still the same, uh, going back for a second. Um, so before you get energy on your turn, you can, if this robot's dead, you can bring it back by dealing 2 damage to an ally and putting it next to that robot. Which is super sweet. And going over this one. So yeah, AB501 was designed by backer uh, Tyler Trulson. He had lots of really great input with the commander character himself and the robot. This one was designed by Jeremy Lux, um, who met us once at PAX East, and he loved us so much that he just basically gave us free reign. Uh, he had the suggestion that he wanted a Day of the Dead style commander, and that led to definitely probably one of my probably my favorite commander design of the new five, uh, or the new ten rather, and that's Luxiana. And then this was our last minute backing by uh, uh, Mr. Tony and Richard from Indiana. Uh, so they both uh, kind of split the $700 tier. We kind of added as a joke to the campaign within the last 15 minutes before it closed. And, you know, we had an extra design. We had an extra slot. Uh, and we're not going to deny somebody who's that big a fan. So we let them kind of chip in, ch chime in, and... Uh, designed their robot and their commander, and it actually came out really cool. We have this team of brothers and their tiger robot, and they wanted a, an aggressive E-type, and that's kind of what we gave them here. Uh, looking over here, uh, 
super fan Reggie. Uh, kind of, this was pretty, this is pretty close to exactly what he wanted it to be. Uh, he wanted an I-type that had no attacks, but, um, just movement abilities. And he just wanted to be like a super scheming guy. So yeah, that's why we got Ica 610 here. Still, he just lets you move somebody and stun them. And his commander ability is at the start of return, you can move somebody to spaces. Anybody, your guy, your opponent's guy. Super versatile and awesome ability. Uh, very happy with how this one mechanically came out. Very simple, clean design. And yep. And uh, lastly, um, we have Sheridan, who is a healing commander. Uh, she has she has three movement and double move, which means she's actually pretty fast for an S type, and she has some decent range. So she has a really high effective range. She has a, what is it, like 10? 10 effective range. Uh, so she can run up and uh, she has two attacks that have a radial blast on them. One has a heal, one is a damage dealer. Um, and she heals herself when she heals also. And then uh, she gives reroll one when they target an ally. So there's a few things you can do with her. One of them is, of course, heal your allies or buff your allies with your other buffs. But if you team her up with uh, robots with radial damage, you can shoot your own robots uh, and get reroll on those and then catch enemies in the blast. And that's kind of a strategy you can build around with her too. Um, for this new iteration, we upped her range. She used to have three range, now she has four range. So we just like, like with Stell, we just gave her some extra help that make her a little bit more viable. And then SSM 126 hasn't changed. Uh, still just a big bomb build around robot like the other SSM. Esha 3000 has finalized art. Um, still blows itself up, still deals lots of damage. This is the only time where parting shot isn't uh, matching the robot's attack. Because the idea was that, since this is merged with an S-type, a lot of the S-types have super long range parting shots. Uh, so we just want to stick that on here to kind of nail down the whole idea that this is an ES-type. Do Esha 9000, the biggest. Um, so this is a faction lock to level 4, kind of a flavorful thing, it's like an Imperial Assault Sky Battleship sort of thing. Um, this robot saw, I believe this robot's seen some numbers changes compared to the current demo. Uh, we've nicknamed it Murder Boat. It has Jet 2, it can nuke somebody from orbit with the Hachi type Supernova. It can push somebody away a good amount and potentially KO them off the board with the Gravity Burst Nova. And then with um, its last attack as Mending Nova, which you can use to heal itself. And man, is that annoying. So yeah, this is everything that a robot without an A-type would be. It also has no single target attacks, which is mainly what A-types do. So to show the lack of an A-type aspect to it, we just gave it three different radial blasts. If you use all five of your bots, do you have to use infinity melee to get energy for its main attack? Yes. Because no matter what, Arc Infinity will only always come in with uh, whatever energy it comes in with, like five or six. Um, so inevitably, in order to power him up, he needs to he needs to take some damage uh, from enemies. So yeah, that is the gimmick. You gonna... the full stream. Let's see, let me check the Twitch chat. I kind of got. Next thing I will be able to participate in the full stream. Might request talk about the struggles of the design process for your card layout. <laughs> yes, please. And um, 
Is this the strongest Gravion? No, it is the deadliest Gravion. So yeah, um, let's see here. And then the last, nope, not the last, uh, SSM 8000. Uh, it does everything that's always done. It hasn't changed. It's just a good robot. However, he did receive new flavor text from Jurlon, which is the one piece of Jurlon flavor text in the game. Um, it should be noted that uh, we have some flavor text from characters that have not appeared yet, uh, which we've left little breadcrumbs for, uh, for uh, potential future expansions. So that's who maybe Ethrael is. When we come together, nothing's unstoppable. Yep, thanks, Jurlon. And then Arcanade got a complete redesign uh, in that he basically, his love before his two attacks didn't really synergize very well. Uh, in that they, whatchamacallit, um, he had like a long range radial attack and a close range melee attack, and he had overload, and it's like, what is he going to do? with both of those attacks even at the same time. They kind of redesigned him here and he has a little bit more variance where he can potentially use his uh, first attack to deal some damage to everybody around him without having to specifically focus on a single target. And then he can shoot uh, far away. So there's more of a chance he'll be actually be able to hit two guys at the same time with this. And uh, basically with this design, we kind of lifted it from uh, Arc 2500. So basically this guy is just a giant Arc 2500 now. He has a short range attack that he deals a bunch of damage, a radius, and a long range attack that can shoot over walls. And that's the that's kind of the idea that we went for with him. And he still has the suite of passive abilities like re Overload, Retaliate, Jamming, and Reroll. Which is an A, an A ability, a G ability, an I ability, and an S ability, respectively. Whew! My jaw hurts. Alright, so that's 100 robots in the game. Everybody who got the game will get these 100 robots. Uh, next we're going to move on to the 10 Commander Variant robots that are uh, for deluxe backers only or anybody who orders, you know... You can just order this extra pack uh, of robots from our website um, very easily <sighs> and add it on to your uh, and add it on to your thing and add it on to your pledge if you did not get the deluxe box and it is worth it because these robots are sweet. So let's move on to those. Um, not labeled one through one hundred. These are robots uh, P one through P ten. So here we start off with the Arc 150 storybook version, which has ability an ability called Inspire, which heals the first robot you attack with on your turn. Um, this is sort of the folktale version of Einar. Uh, it features art from Emily Hancock in a completely different style from anything else in the game, because I wanted to definitely experiment with having uh, different artists work on the game in the future. I wonder how receptive people that would be. So yeah, the, but the flavor is, yeah, this is kind of like the tapestry of Einar. Um, and how he started the war. So, uh, Fabled Arc Blades, Fabled Arm Vokens are almost the same as his current attacks, but they both have light, which means you can use them both at the same time, even if he has moved or not. However, he has lower movement than before, than his normal version. There's always a, re there's a reason and I have to use the other one or this one. Ugh. SSM 3000, Sunset Mode. So this uh, robot uses the piece that's in the game for SSM 3000. He's gained some shades. This is kind of Gamoon's variant on Rocket Dog. Uh, the main difference here is that he has gained that Steady Fire ability that is signature to Gamoon. And has... Uh, Gamoon's swaggering head ram attack for his um, combine ability, replacing the uh, other attack that SSM 3000 originally had, which was just a weaker push. Alright, so L2000, uh, Duchess mode, which is Poppet's specific robot, also got some art retouching here, and now she's uh, 
This robot has some sweet gold filigree on it, on it now. And some more cracks from wear and tear and pop it land. Uh, this robot's first attack is the same. Its main difference is that it gained Bomber Whirlwind, which is Poppet's secondary action from her main robot, and it gained Lone Crusade. Uh, so yeah, but it also lost Retaliate. So no longer has Retaliate, but it did gain Lone Crusade and Bomber Whirlwind, which is kind of neat. And then we got uh, Jellion, which is the newest robot in this card file, uh, definitely the most recently added. Uh, so this one's cool, it is a variant on Gel 2000, the seldom appreciated uh, rocket launching GI type. Where this one no longer has a damaging rocket, it just has an energy burning rocket. And, in order to make the robot effective with uh, Rios' showdown ability, uh, which targets singular guys on the board, we designed this robot, so we had, a, we, had a, we had a design issue. We had a commander that wants to target singular guys on the board, and a robot that had radial, that had radial splash damage. So, you would only get rerolls on guys that wouldn't get... Uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, if you, he only got rerolls on guys where you wouldn't get that sweet, uh, splash damage. So that was kind of dumb. Um, so we gave him a new variant on his second, uh, action on his level one. Rios has, on his level one, Rios has, like, this extra long range, uh, spear attack. Um, so we kind of did that kind of thing here, where we gave him a, uh, lance attack that moves somebody. Uh, two spaces from eight spaces away. So you can use this so You can actually do this uh, to either move Somebody into range and then bombard them with the rock with the missile or move somebody out of range and hit them with the missile uh, And get the reroll. So there's actually a whole bunch of different things to that this robot does the point is though that his uh, showdown ability that gives you rerolls on stray guys on the board will come in handy when you use at least one of his attacks on each turn. And you kind of have to think about which one you want to do sometimes. Alright, number five. Arrows Saul, which is a variant on Arrows 3000. Uh, this robot has gained an extra integrity point, and overall has changed a lot. So instead of having a seven range little arcing shot, it has infinity range, like Stell's ability. Uh, so you can shoot somebody from very far away and deal one damage to them. Literally anybody, actually. She can deal one damage to anybody on the board if you roll four energy into it. And she has a completely different second action that is more similar to a level one's disarm ability, where she can disarm somebody, but also bust, buff their defense by two. Uh, which is neato. So you can choose one guy on the board and just say, this guy is not attacking and he can't be attacked, basically. So it's useful to use on your allies and on your enemies. Um, that's kind of the idea here, and she can also always, of course, use both of them with her Justice Command Arrest. I mean, with her Overload ability, if she stands still. And she still uh, does the thing where she has a Rest Mandate. You can shoot somebody from all the way over on the other side of the board, and then uh, with her arcing laser, and then get rerolls on them if you uh, target them with one of your allies. Oh, let's see. Uh, number six out of ten is Ion 5000 Thunderbolt mode. And. This robot has gone through some iterations after some playtesting, but basically his secondary action, Control Bolting, which is uh, also kind of similar to the Lancer attack on here, where it's a movement ability, uh, can move somebody three spaces, six away for really cheap. Uh, and you can use that to set up his main big punch, or you can use it to um, move it away from some move another robot away from its own ally so you can get uh, value with Rios' showdown ability. Which is cool. 
Number seven. The only non-commander variant in the commander variant pack is Ender 5000 Super Mode. Uh, so this robot is just a variant art of Ender 5000, but um, it gains a little bit of S-type support on him. So he his ability, his second ability, which was originally a shotgun. Not a shotgun, a little machine gun that dealt anti-air damage is now a healing laser that can hit up to five times. And then his main attack is a uh, barrage of lasers and missiles and bullets. So he has aimed piercing and anti-air on his first attack, which is pretty cool. And instead of having... The original Ender 5000 has an ability called Ultra Blitz when he combines, which allows all of your robots to move for free. This one has an ability called Ultra Salvo, which allows all of your robots to attack for free when he combines. This is like a super angry, uh, super angry version of, uh, of uh, Ender 5000. And it's pretty neat. It's also faction aligned, uh, so you can only really use it with other um, allied provinces robots, which there aren't a lot of in the game. That's the restriction there. That's why you just don't want to use this guy. Every single time you would always want to use Ender 5000. This one can only be used on specific teams. Number 8, my favorite, Excelgon Super Mode, which is just a variant of Excelgon. Uh, everything on this robot is the same except for his command, except for his combinability. Because uh, the idea is I wanted two different Excelgons, one and you kind of want to choose which one you want to do, uh, depending on the game that you're in. So, his combined ability called Cavalier Finale, uh, after he combines, you can actually destroy your own ally robots and detonate them to deal one damage to everybody next to them. Um, and then he gets that boost off of his Magnificence. So he can come in as a 9 movement, 9 energy, 9 integrity dude, uh, if you want him to and blow up his uh, allies. I really wanted to make it be any uh, ally robot, but I was talked out of it because imagine that you're in a 2v2 and your partner is a giant jerk and they just decide to blow up <laughs> your robots with Cavalier Finale without your permission <laughs> and then that'd be pretty bad. But uh, so now you can only blow up your own robots, uh, sadly. Can't win all. He can't win every fight. Um, El uh, number nine, El Jellion. This is a really interesting, weird thing that we're doing. Uh, interesting space for designing. Where we, this is a commander robot that is made out of two different commanders, and the idea here is that it has uh, an ability called Showdown Crusade. It, so this robot uh, is made up of Rios and Poppet, and the Showdown Crusade says that this robot can, com can be combined into from a Rios or a Poppet commander robot. So it can be, so you don't have to, ha you can't use, you obviously can't use Rios and Poppet on the same team, uh, same five robot team, but you can use one of them. Uh, and no matter which one you use, uh, it can be, either of them can become this guy. And it kind of, his, uh, Showdown Crusade is in kind of a mix of both of their abilities. So if there are no other robots within three, th three hexes of it, three hexes of it, which is Poppet's thing, uh, this robot's actions have plus one power and it takes one less damage from enemies. So as long as there are no other robots, ally, or enemy anywhere near it, It'll take less damage, which is Poppet's thing, and it'll deal more damage, which is basically Rios' thing. Uh, so it's a big berserker, and that also synergizes with his Elfire Supernova. Uh, so if you combine him in the middle of the board, he'll no longer deal damage. He'll, he'll, tell, he'll deal less damage to himself if there's nobody within three hex. Uh, let me think about that real quick. Might have been a typo on the. Yeah, there might have been a typo on the spreadsheet here. 
If there are no other robot, if there are no other other robots within the three hexes, this robot's actions have plus one power and it takes one less damage. Da -da 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 -da. No, that's right. I think we just made it so its commander ability and its uh, combined ability don't actually interact. There was a point where they did, but no, Elfire Supernova will always deal two damage to some fool and uh, himself if you just if you choose to use it. And that's the only thing that's changed on the actions. Yeah, so yes, I'm gonna take a second look at this. Something seems off here. But yeah, Showdown Crusade, sweet. Um, just so yeah, Rios and Poppet, uh, Joint Commander. And then the final robot in the game is another version of Arc Infinity. Uh, Arc Infinity Hero Mode, which is specifically aligned uh, to Einar, so you have to be using Einar as your commander to make this guy. Um, he has the 9 damage melee. Uh, it's not supposed to have critical, but it does, so I need to take that off. Uh, good thing I caught that. So, 9 damage. He has the 9 damage melee. Uh, this robot is actually completely different from the other Arc Infinity, where this one has a lot of energy. And in order to get that extra energy to use Final Arc Blade, he has an ability called Persevere, which is whenever you fail a dice roll, you get to add two energy to your energy pool. So if you shoot somebody with uh, the Arc Nova Vulcan and miss a bunch, you can add a bunch of energy and then final Arc Blade somebody's face off for nine damage. And it is powerful. Uh, and uh, different, this one doesn't have uh, Infinity Arena anymore. It has Final Ignition, which actually just Immediately, as soon as you combine this guy, you get an energy in your pool, and he can act immediately. So he's able to run out uh, gunning and slashing as soon as you get into him. So he's actually just like, he plays like a he plays like a big dummy type. He smashes, he bashes, he goes fast, he hits hard. Um, that's kind of like what we were going for with him. And he has some new fancy art from... Uh, Stephen Gibson. And that is mainly that. Um, we can also go over some other things, which is cool. Let's try this. Let's see if I can change the window that this is capturing. Chain window. Change to in design yes all right so what else is going on with the if anybody has questions or comments about the cards um please let me know now i'm gonna take a second to talk about some of the other uh e julian's fries he does julian fries and then um Let's look at the other things that are going on in development. Right now, I'm working very hard on getting uh, the game done, basically. So, what you're looking at here are the robot standees, like the actual pieces you play with. Uh, and so there's a hundred of these, and I just got finished uh, laying them out. And now they are going to end up being put on the uh, punch board. Most of the robot art fits pretty well in the standee frame. Uh, some of them don't, um, so that's just things to learn for the future. Uh, to make art that looks good on the card and on a standee, and not one or the other. But as you can see, the, uh, the standees let you see how far your robots can move and how far your opponent's robots can move. They have how much integrity they have, and they have a little uh, a little associated set number there that'll ultimately get covered up by the standee base. It's really just there for um, just increased organization. Uh, and of course they have the robot name, and that's great. You always want to know what the robot's called, and that won't be covered by 
<clears throat> the uh, the standee piece. Energy isn't found on the standee anymore because you didn't really see a reason to put energy on the standee really. You really just want to know how far a robot can move and how much you have to shoot at it to kill it in terms of uh, the gameplay. That's something we figured out. Uh, yeah, so we got a hundred of these standees that are going in. That's great. And then what else? The other thing that is almost done is... Do I have this? Is this it? Let's flip over here a little bit. I can show you... If it ever shows up. There we go. So here's what we're looking at over here in the InDesign factory. Here's an example of one of the punch boards. Uh, so the idea for the final game is that there's going to be four of this punch board, this layout. And each one will come with uh, eight tokens on it. So in the, each of the, they'll, they, it's different, varied on the punch board. Um, so like this one has damage and defense buff and evasion buff tokens and a stun token and two scrap tokens. Uh, that changes depending on what robots you find. The robots on the punch boards are in numerical order. So when you first open the box, you base it if you want to play uh, Iron vs. Atwal, which is the first 20 robots, their standees will all be 1 through 20 on this first punch board. And the associated tokens, like damage and defense buff tokens and stun tokens, are the tokens that you would need to play with uh, those teams. So then the second punch board that has Ixa on it, for example, would have some more evasion tokens and cloaking tokens. And then the third punch board that uh, has like Diane on it has a little token for her that reminds you your opponent which robot has retaliate on it. Um, so that's the thought process there. Uh, all the tokens are double-sided, so damage buff has damage debuff on the back. Uh, all the damage counters, which you see on the right with these red cracked gears, have energy damage on the back, so drain 1, drain 3, drain 5. And then the tokens in the middle here, um, these guys are your energy trackers. We, they're originally green, but we realized that the energy tracker is green. And if the token you put on top of it is green, you can't see where it is. And that's uh, something that I never really thought of. So we're changing it more to a white, uh, so you can actually see it on top of the little slidey thing. And then to denote what your max energy is, we're giving you these little hats. Uh, what, which are two variants of each. One can go, you can arrange it onto the side of the token or on the top of the token and on the reverse side is the opposite uh, so depending on what you want so you can use these little uh, ear shaped things to keep track of what your maximum energy is on your turn we got a lot of requests for that recently so we're sticking that on there uh, the game will have eight energy trackers uh, the, I mean eight energy tokens and eight hats in case you lose them they'll come with six scrap tokens uh, Something like, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, to 7, 10, 11, uh, 44 damage tokens, which should be more than enough for any games that you'll ever play. And then I believe between 4 and 5 of each uh, buff token thing. And then uh, other specific ones you'll get, uh, as many as we think you'll need. There are three, like, you'll get three cloak tokens, because there are three cloaking robots in the game. Um, so ain't that cool. Uh, now where these little where these hexagons are, where those standees are, where those standees are going to go, and that's my next task after I finish up with the stream, and that'll be very very cathartic. You place all of these robot standees on uh, this infernal punchboard jeep, and then uh, after that. And so there's four of these punch boards, and then there's two punch boards for all the terrain in the game. And that is six punch boards total, which will come in the box. Um, then I just do some finishing graphics work on those to make sure everything looks good. 
Uh, and yeah, I mean, how cool is that? The game is almost done. Please, God, deliver me. Uh, so that's where a majority of the work lies. Then I'm gonna immediately crack open the rulebook, take like 17,000 stabs at the rulebook, like I'm Kenshiro or some shit, and then I'm gonna be like, wa ta 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 and that rulebook is gonna get a little bit reformatted and finished. I'm gonna see if I can shave some pages off of it, uh, because there's no reason for it to be as many pages as it is. So I'm just gonna rearrange things and shrink text, maybe, and see what I can do there. So it's not as intimidating as it seems, even though there's maybe like six or seven or eight pages of rules in the entire book, and then the rest is like, glossary and other stuff. So I'm just gonna see if I can just, uh, yeah, get some, um, shrink the rulebook down a little bit. Uh, what else? And yeah, that's, that's, I post a little checklist in the Discord chat, uh, that goes over everything that needs to be done for the game to come out. The game is not, you're not getting your games in January, uh, which is very sad and shameful to say, I'm very, very sorry. Um, we overestimated how long it would take to do certain things. But the game, so the idea is that we get all of the files and the game itself actually finished and shipped to our manufacturer for the end of this month, and then we, uh, and then the delay between that and everybody getting their games, including us, um, will be how long it takes for the manufacturer to process and ship the games, uh, to actually, you know, make the games and give them to us, as well as any, uh, redos on as well as any redos on like if there are any errors and things like that like if they print them on the wrong materials which I'm already calling uh, so it's gonna be very very specific with our manufacturer and uh, make sure the first print proof is as perfect as possible so we can get you guys your sweet as hell robot game um, yeah that'll be great that'd be great won't it uh, Yeah, it's beautiful, ain't it? Uh, let's see, what else? I don't got Photoshop open, I don't think anything, I don't think I have anything else to show you, it's really just, yeah. So, production update, punch boards, standees. And that is about it. Um, I think nothing else is really relevant here, except for just more InDesign files. Alright. Ooh. Everybody play everybody pray to the InDesign gods for me. This program is the least usable program ever made um, by human hands. And I am doing my best uh, to wield it and get the game done. Alright. But yeah, that's uh, that should be the spiel for tonight. I'm sorry that we couldn't get tabletop simulator working. Uh, or voice chat. But I hope everyone enjoyed the sound of my voice as always. And, uh, the Wild Arms 2 soundtrack in the background. Um, Wild Arms 2 is sweet, and everybody should play it. It's probably, like, three bucks on the PlayStation Store. So while you're waiting for your Aegis to arrive in the mail, uh, yeah, everybody go play Wild Arms. <sighs> 2 and 3 and Alter Code F. Those are the best ones. You want to play those. Original one's pretty good, too, but I think Alter Code F, the remake, is better. Uh... All right, everybody. Oh, my heart, my jaw, my brain. Let's see, any chance there'd be extra space to have commander standees that keep next to your energy card? No. <laughs> Hard no. God, getting a hundred standees into the game was the worst. <laughs> that was actually, that's the source of a lot of the delays, to be completely honest. I did not think out the, uh, the geometry for a hundred standees very well when we did the campaign. Where we had the files originally that, to accommodate 100 standees. But, I realized only after doing a proof of them that those standees were hella small. Like, they were dinky. Uh, and then I'm like, we can't ship the game like this. Uh, so I needed the standees to get bigger. Um, 
and that required a lot of annoying geometry and like so many iterations of these punch boards. So yeah, no more. We are at our max. Uh, maybe in the future we'll have room for uh, commander standees because I think that'd be pretty cool. I actually really want to do something game design wise with our roster of awesome commanders, all 18 of them currently, uh, and growing. I'd love to figure out, yeah, something to do it. Maybe I'll make a battle con variant. <laughs> I'll go talk to I'll, t I'll go talk to D Brad Talton, and uh, I'll see if we can get a battle con version that uses uh, Aegis commanders, and that would be cool. Let's see. Um, let's see here, uh, expansion goodie. Dude, D. Brad is the coolest dude. I love him. So yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, uh, the message. Let's see here. All right, I'll see you guys on the flip side. And uh, well, I swear that we'll have the new tabletop simulator demo done soon. It's just, yeah, there's only one of me, and, uh, Kettle, who normally does the tabletop sim stuff, is, like, trapped in grad school. But, you know, the, the, everything should be done. Right now we're facing a problem where every time we get the cards into it, it looks like fuzzy garbage. So we need to figure out how to make the cards not look like fuzzy garbage. Because I want everybody to look at everything in our game in HD. And then the new tabletop sim will have other little, uh, quality of life goodies, too. So yeah, good night everybody, uh, I'm glad that you were able to join me uh, this evening. It has been a pleasure talking with you, and I love you all. <laughs>